Hey everyone, it's Jason Dunn here from Laptop Thoughts, and this is my review video of the HP TM2. Now this is a tablet PC, but HP doesn't really call it that anymore. That term has sort of fallen out of uh, use. It's essentially a laptop that has a convertible screen. Uh, so if you've watched my unboxing review, um, which I'll put the link up here right now, I've gone through all the specs, you know, and some of the basic functions of the laptop. So this review is essentially just my own thoughts about what it's like to use this device uh, day to day. You know, is it is it a good investment? investment, is it not, etc. Uh, so one of the things that I mentioned um, in my unboxing video was this pattern. Um, again, it's a totally personal opinion, but um, I honestly would not buy this product virtually just because of this pattern on the outside. Uh, it, it's it's pretty, uh, but I don't really like pretty laptops. You know, I would have. I think that this this laptop with the sort of brushed aluminum finish would have actually looked fantastic if it didn't have this finish on it. So, yeah, I'll just get that right out of the way. Some of you may love this. Some of you may hate it. Uh, I put myself in the former camp. I just don't really like it all that much. But let's get into the actual um, unit itself. Uh, the touchpad functionality. Um, HP has had some, uh, you know, misses and some hits when it comes to touchpads. Uh, this touchpad actually works really well. Uh, it's multi-touch. Um, it doesn't have, you know, physical hardware. Well, there is a slight click um, when you use left and right, um, but you can also click here. So essentially, the whole surface is sort of clickable. Um, I didn't really find any any particular problems using it. Um, it was uh, definitely light years better than the uh, the DM3 that I reviewed a little a little while ago. Um, over here, you have the stylus. So the stylus pops out. So I'll just uh, fire up the unit here. Actually, that <laughs> brings me to another important point. This uh, this is the power switch here, right? Now I've had I've I've looked at you know a, a lot of different HP laptops, and this is pretty standard for HP. They put the power switch here, they put the Wi-Fi switch here. Uh, this power switch it it sticks um, on um, on uh, DV2 that I have. You can kind of just press it and go. I literally have to put my fingernail underneath the little hump here and and jam it forward. I don't know if that is a, a defect on the unit I have here, like if this uh, loaner unit that HP Canada sent me, um, if that's something that's defective or if that's something that HP has changed, but I really don't like it. Uh, I, you should be able to just press it and go. You shouldn't need to kind of jam your finger underneath the button and uh, move it forward. So yeah, that was kind of weird, but again, that may just be a defect to my particular unit, so you'll want to uh, maybe check one out in the store for yourself and see. Now. Um, I mentioned the uh, stylus here, and this is really, you know, let's face it, a really important part um, about this particular product is the fact that it is a convertible, uh, a tablet PC. So, um, let me just move the camera up here a little bit. So this is, you know, this is why people buy this product, right? You move the screen around like this, you drop it down, and then boom, uh, you have a uh, you have a tablet PC here. So. Here's what's interesting, right? Number one, um, you can use your fingers, right? So you can actually double click. I think that's launching. Yeah, there we go. So that's, wait, is it launching? Well, this brings up an interesting point. Let's talk about performance for a second here. Um, the HP TM2 uses the Intel Core 2 Duo SU7300. Now, that is an ultra low voltage processor that runs at only 1.3 uh, gigahertz. I'm just gonna try this again here. There we go. I think I think it's actually launching. Yeah, because I can see the Vista thing now. 1.3 gigahertz Windows uh, 7. Boy, it's not a lot of grunt. You know, like uh, let, let's be honest with ourselves here. Uh, 1.3 gigahertz, even though it is, uh, uh, you know, has two cores. Um, the oh gosh, this is Corel's wanting me to register. So. Um, you can see here, though, I, I am pretty effectively using my fingers to navigate through Windows 7. Um, it's actually not as bad as I thought, but not as good as I think it kind of needs to be. Um, oh, there goes my phone. All right, now that I've turned the ringer off on my phone, haha, we can continue uh, with this video. Okay, so here is uh, the Corel software, okay? So you can use your fingers uh, to to uh, manipulate the software here, and it works. It, it, it works pretty good. Um, so I'll click on start a new drawing here. Um, it's going to go for kind of a couple seconds. We'll say okay. Now, like I mentioned, uh, you can use your fingers. Um, 
it supports multi-touch, but what's kind of interesting is that when you try to do multi-touch within this program, multi-touch inside the Corel software is actually to move this. And I frankly, I don't know enough about the software to figure out exactly how you would use, you know, multiple fingers to do different types of, uh, you know, um, motion or whatever. But yeah, I mean, basically, you know, it, it works pretty well. Now, here's what's interesting, of course. You can use your fingers uh, or you can use the pen and the pen has, um, uh, I'm gonna have to verify this in the video, but I wanna say, is it maybe 120 levels, levels of pressure? So there's a lot of different types of pressure, right? So you can, I can, I can press really hard. You can see here, it's kind of dark. Actually, maybe I'll, maybe I'll switch to a different color here. Click, click. Okay, so I can press really hard and it's kind of dark blue, or I can just go light and you can see it kind of feathers away. And then of course, there's the eraser, which you can use to erase things. So, this is the real reason why someone would get this product. So I wanted to get that out of the way kind of first, is that for different types of people, uh, maybe, you know, different, uh, whether you're a student or maybe you're an architect, you know, if you want to be able to use your fingers, be able to use this pen to do your job or do uh, kind of your, your passion, you're really going to find these, this useful. But if you're not one of those people, I'm just going to exit out of this app here. If you're not one of those people, you may find that the... Um, the things that you have to kind of give up in order to get that on this product, they're not really worth it. And what I mean by that is, let's let's just kind of take a look at the thickness here, okay? So uh, the thickness of it at its at its thickest part is 3.96 centimeters, okay? That is just enormous. I mean, for modern laptops, I mean, if you go back a few years, yeah, fine, this is not too bad, but the fact that it humps out here uh, is, is, is kind of, I don't know, I'm just not really impressed. It's also it's also uh, really, really heavy, right? I mean, this thing is uh, 2.15 kilograms, uh, and for the size of screen that this has, that's, that's pretty heavy, okay? Now, let's just, let me set that aside for a second. Uh, let's just do a comparison, okay? So, this is the HP uh, V13. So I'm just gonna kind of put it down here so you can kind of see the difference in thickness, okay? So here, I mean, it's 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 still quite a bit thicker. I mean, hell, the V13 almost fits in kind of just the bottom portion here in terms of thickness. Now, the only reason I bring that up is because this V13 uh, from Dell, it also has uh, an SU7300. So it also has a dual core 1.3 gigahertz. So from a CPU perspective, these things are, are identical. Now, so, you're not going to get a lot of CPU oomph from kind of either one of these, but if you don't need a tablet, I think a device like this, like the V13, makes uh, it makes a lot more sense, right? So if you need a tablet and you want to be able to use uh, the pen, you want to be able to use touch screen and kind of do all that, then uh, the TM2 is definitely going to be uh, a worthy contender. Oops, I'm holding it upside down. What am I, like George Bush? Boy, that's kind of weird. Um, oh. What the heck? Oh, you know what? I think I'm pressing the uh, button here. Yeah, so <laughs> one of the buttons on the side here is actually a screen uh, rotation. And so you can see actually now it's in uh, it's in portrait mode. Man, this screen is so glossy. You, you can tell I'm having a hard time filming this video <laughs> because I'm trying to not pick up every single light that I have. I should probably have that light back there turned off. Anyway, um, yeah, so you can actually put it in portrait mode here. So now you can see the, uh, the Windows um, start button is down in the bottom corner there. And if I press this button again, it should rotate rotate around uh, and it should give me, yeah, so now we're back to sort of the standard display. That's the other thing too, if you notice when I press that button, it, it took a couple seconds. We're living in an era now of, of touch computing with, uh, frankly, with devices like the iPad. I mean, that's kind of, you know, the first real big name, uh, you know, slate device that we've kind of seen uh, recently. And you, you pick up an iPad and you rotate it, it's, you know, boom, right? It snaps, it rotates. And Windows 7 is just, it's not a real good operating system from, uh, from a touch performance point of view. Now, obviously, one of the things that Windows 7 has over the iPad is that you can load any app up here, right? If you want to do AutoCAD software on there, so you want to load up any Windows app you want, you'll be able to do it on this. And so that's obviously a really important advantage. But the 1.3 gigahertz CPU uh, just doesn't do a real good job at sort of keeping up with you. If your needs are relatively simple and you're not, you know, a heavy multitasker, then yeah, it, this device will probably be okay. Now, let's talk about a couple of other things. Uh, let's, uh, since I was talking about performance, let's just, why aren't you opening you... See, you see what I mean with this sort of performance? It's, it's kind of weird, right? Like, 
you want to just be able to tap tap and have it, oh god, now it's renaming it. Ah, oh, finally, okay, all right. So, here, let me, uh, let me just do this. Let me, let me put it into this mode, and then we'll just move the camera. Okay, so I was talking about um, performance, right? So, overall, this, this thing uh, rated a 3,054 PC marks. Um, you can read off all these numbers here, I won't kind of go through them, but it's essentially, uh, you know, the uh, the memory suite, the TV and movie suite, they, they rated not too high. The gaming suite was only 16, uh, pardon me, 1673, so not real high performance in gaming. You're not going to get this unit for gaming, right? So, yeah, uh, that's, I'll just kind of stop there. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, I installed uh, um, uh, Pro Show. This is this uh, this uh, tool that I use to generate um, the uh, outputs for uh, HD video. Let me just zoom out here a little second here. I'm trying desperately to double click. Okay, there we go. So yeah, this uh, Pro Show Gold. I'll put up the score um, afterwards. But basically, what I do with Pro Show Gold is I take uh, a bunch of um, images and I use it to generate uh, a 1080p um, output file. And then I give. Uh, I see how long it takes. Essentially, though, with 1.3 gigahertz CPU, you're not really going to use this for video editing, right? Like, let, let's face it, you're not going to use it for you know super heavy um, kind of uh, content creation. Okay, here's this HP support assistant. I just want to go away HP support assistant. I don't I don't want you to be up here. Let's talk about something that this unit's actually good at and uh, that's battery life. So although you know down here you have this huge hump and I complain about the thickness and the weight and all these other things it actually does have uh, quite a good battery near. So it is a six cell battery um, and what that means um, I have a test that I do. It's called a Lord of the Rings test. And what I do is I take the whole uh, movie for uh, the Lord of the Rings, the extended edition. Let me just turn this around here. We'll look at it as a regular laptop. With the extended edition, which is I think something like two hours and 51 minutes long, like it's a really long movie. Um, a lot of laptops uh, at 100% screen brightness with Wi-Fi turned off and with the volume muted. Uh, now that's a little bit different, because but typically you'd be plugging in headphones, right? You're not going to watch a movie over laptop speakers for the most part. This particular laptop was able to make it through the whole movie and still have 40% uh, battery life left over. Now that is actually, that's really impressive. There are a lot of laptops I look at that can't even make it through the whole movie. Uh, the, the, uh, the V13, I don't think it made it through the whole thing. So. One pro to this is definitely the battery life. I did another test where I used a 7, 720p trailer. I loop it and I see how long it'll actually last. So that's that's a uh, that's a high def uh, trailer, and that particular trailer uh, lasted for four hours and twenty one minutes. So it did it did quite a good job there. So. In terms of battery life, this thing is quite good. Uh, the keyboard is quite good. Uh, I mentioned this in a lot of my videos, but I'll just mention it here again. Um, because this one is, uh, it comes in Canada, you don't get the full size shift key. Uh, if you're watching this in the US or in a lot of other countries around the world, you won't have this particular issue. But if you're watching this in Canada, you should be aware that uh, you only get a partial size shift key here, which kind of bugs me. I really wish that they would just have uh, pure, you know, um, French versions and pure English versions so we could get full size shift key. But anyway, I don't want to dwell on that. So, summaries for this. It's got a good keyboard. It's got a good touchpad. Uh, the screen, while it's uh, Super high glossy. It is uh, still um, a decent screen, you know, decent, decent screen brightness and whatnot. The battery life is quite strong. Um, day to day, kind of using this, if you were just using it to browse the web and do, you know, using uh, doing word processing and things like that, you should, I would think, be able to easily get. Uh, five, six hours, you know, somewhere in that range. It depends on your screen brightness. Um, other things that this thing is good at, obviously, the uh, touch screen, either with your fingers you can do or with the pen. So if you're an artist or you're, you know, you do anything that, re that requires uh, the pen input, you'll really like this laptop. I mean, it has, it has a lot going for it. But if you're not one of those people, if you don't really kind of need a tablet computer, um, there's not a, there are other better products on the market in terms of size, weight, you know, kind of overall performance and uh, price as well. So it really depends on what kind of a user you are. If if you uh, need a tablet computer, uh, this one is certainly worth considering. Now I should note that there's a newer version of the TM2. Um, 
HP released it pretty recently. It has a Core i3 processor, so that should give you a, a bigger boost in performance, which would increase the snappiness of this system kind of overall. Um, yeah, so you definitely wanna, wanna be on the lookout for that. So overall, I guess I would give this sort of two ratings. If you're someone that needs a tablet computer, I would give this probably about an eight out of 10. I think it's uh, definitely a worthwhile machine uh, if you need uh, you know, a touch screen or you wanna be able to use the, uh, the stylus. If you're not someone that needs a touch computer, um, Frankly, uh, right now at least, um, you give up too much. You give up, uh, you know, size, thickness, weight. Um, it's just, it's just really not worth it. So I would definitely suggest you look at a different laptop if you don't need that touch computing. So this has been Jason Dunn in a somewhat long-winded review. Sorry about that. From Laptop Thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, please uh, post a comment, uh, rate the video, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching.